Our famous TTL automatic strobe exposure is now available via fiber optic connection for Canon cameras using the new TT5 transmitter. Let me show you how to put that together. All right, out the gate, what you're gonna notice is that this is compatible with Canon mirrorless and DSLR cameras in an iClate housing that features a half 20 threaded hole that is usually plugged with a electric bulkhead, which we'll be removing. And it's going to be compatible with an iClite DS strobe and the RC2 receiver. All right, so step one is gonna be very similar to installing the camera and that's just gonna be removing the back. So release the locking mechanism and lift up on the lid snap. Put those up off the hooks of the back. Then we can set that aside. And you're gonna notice on the inside of the electric bulkhead, there is a nut that's a retaining nut to keep this from being unthreaded. We're going to remove that using a 5 8 inch wrench. Remove the hot shoe and take that nut off. I'm going to take the cap of the bulkhead off and using an 11 16 wrench, we're going to carefully loosen that from the housing. And removing this bulkhead is going to expose our half 20 hole. Go ahead and take that retaining nut, put it back on the bulkhead that keeps it safe and in one place. And then go ahead and keep your hot shoe connected. That way you can keep that with your spare parts. Very lightweight, easy to walk around with. Also take the bulkhead cap and thread it back onto your bulkhead. And that can be stored for later use or as a backup. So now you'll notice we've exposed our half 20 hole in the iClight housing, and we're going to inspect the ceiling surface. Uh, make sure it is free of debris, and a very small amount of lubricant can be put onto that ceiling surface, uh, but don't let anything get attracted to it. And then from there, we're going to turn our attention to the transmitter itself. Now on the transmitter, you're going to notice the Locking nut is also on here, which we will use. And then you'll notice from here, there is a ceiling O-ring. That's what corresponds to that ceiling surface. And then you have two leads. This longer lead here is going to lead to the battery pack, which we'll get to here in a minute. And then the shorter lead will lead to the hot shoe. But what we're gonna do is take those two leads, simply feed them down into that half 20 hole. And then you're gonna start the thread, being careful not to cross thread and then thread that down into the housing until the O-ring makes contact with the ceiling surface. Now, it's a compression seal, so once you get it tightened down, grabbing the body and the head at the same time, just simply tighten it down until it stops. Turn your attention back to the inside of the housing, take the locking nut, thread in both leads through the locking nut, and then put that locking nut, thread it back onto the body of the transmitter. Now this locking nut in this particular application is not as critical as it was with the electric bulkhead. And the reason for that is with the electric bulkhead, we would have a fiber opt or a, I'm sorry, electrical sync cord that had a collar that we would be threading on and off. So it would see a lot of action. This particular design does not have that feature. It just has fiber optic cords that just plug in and out. So it doesn't see that torque like you were gonna find on the electric bulkhead. But we still put that nut there just to have a little bit of insurance. And then from here, you'll notice that the, again, the longer lead is going to correspond to the battery compartment. And this battery compartment holds two CR2032 battery cells. And I'll show you how to put those in here in a second. Um, but this lead has a mechanical feature that has a rib to it. And then of course the mating piece has a corresponding slot. When you put those two together, it simply slides in like that. Um, but before we do that to provide us with a little bit more working room, let's go ahead and just get the batteries inserted. If you look closely on the inside here, you have a negative and a positive indication letting you know that that's the side of the battery that you want to put down. So we'll grab our 2332 batteries, 
And in this case, if you look at the battery, you've got a positive on the top here. So that's the positive side of the battery. And then on the other side, of course, is the negative side. So take the negative side and again, correspond it to the pattern there. And that one says it wants the negative side facing the bottom. So we will put it down on the bottom. And then we will take the other 2032 battery and it's gonna be the opposite where it wants the positive side to face down. So that's gonna look like that. And then basically close it up. And you'll notice that there's a switch on this battery compartment and it is going to correspond to turning this on and off. Now you're gonna get a lot of battery life out of this. Um, I shot it for a week and did not have a problem, but out of a good habit, it would be nice to go ahead and turn this off just to conserve the power in the cells for as long as possible. But in this case, I'll preemptively go ahead and just turn it on. And that is going to be the switch going towards the two wires. Towards the two wires is on. And I'm going to, again, line up the mechanical connection here and simply push it together. And that's as simple as that. And I'm not going to place this compartment in the housing just yet because I want to put my camera in here and I want to find out exactly where do I want this to be. Uh, in this particular instance, we have the Canon R10. So I will take the camera mount out of it. I'm going to put the camera mount on like you would per instruction, which is simply using a flathead to screwdriver and tightening it down. Move any controls applicable out of the way. And in this case, I am going to slide my camera in and determine the best real estate to place my battery compartment. In this particular case, it looks like I have the most amount of room up here on the top left of the housing. So let's go ahead and give that a look. And yeah, that works out nice. We'll take our adhesive pad and remove the adhesive from one side. And we're gonna place it on this cradle here so and that just keeps it nice and neat on the ceiling I'm gonna go ahead and place it so that the door opens while it's in there and then this switch is gonna face me so like that and then remove the adhesive off this back here And that looks like it's gonna be about perfect right there. I'm gonna go ahead and place that now. Check that. Yeah, that'll tuck nicely over there and look clean. I will check my back to make sure that we have clearance. Just don't want my back to hit. The battery holder. And that looks perfect. So we'll move back, remove the camera. Well, again, at this point, I'm just gonna double check that I do have it turned on. <clears throat> Turn my attention to the hot shoe that I have here. Again, you'll notice that there is a hot shoe connector down here. Um, this does have an orientation to it. Best way to find is that there's two holes here and that corresponds to two proud posts line those two up and press the two together until you have a nice connection. And what's nice is that this is not a locking connector, so if you do end up pulling your camera out, uh, it will disconnect itself. So let's go ahead and take our camera. <clears throat> let's pull our power leads out of the way as well at this point. Line up your hot shoe on your camera. Make sure it's fully inserted. You wanna make sure that all of the pins are making contact with the camera. And it's all the way pushed forward. And then simply line up your camera mount with the base inside the housing. And then I like to feed those power wires down here and out of the way so that they don't interfere with the back when I put it on, nor do they block my screen. Line up my controls, place my back on, lift both lid hooks, lid snaps over the lid hooks, and then lock down. 
At this point in time, I'm gonna turn the camera on and I'm actually gonna take a test shot. And you'll notice that uh, I have two red lights, visual lights that I can see. And that's gonna be a good thing. It lets me test to make sure that this thing is actually transmitting. Um, and then it will funnel through the fiber optic cord and up into the strobe. All right, I will spare you all the other steps of putting the train handle on in the ports. We have plenty of videos for that. Or if you have any questions on that process, drop us a comment down below. But from this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my DS strobe or strobes because I have two ports that I can use. And I'm gonna use the RC2 receiver. Now this is designed specifically to work with the transmitter. I'm going to line up the pins and receptacles with the pins and receptacles on the bulkhead of the strobe. Press into place, making sure a little bit of lubricant and this is clean and free of debris. And then I'm going to thread that into place. And using the collar of the receiver, I'm gonna make sure it's tightened all the way down. When I start, almost 99% of my shots are in this TTL mode. You can switch over to manual mode, which I'll show you here in just a second, but I will preemptively set the switch of my strobe to TTL and I will turn it on. And you'll notice that the ready light does glow and it's ready to go. I will test my strobe by hooking up my fiber optic cord again. This is just a friction fit. There's no waterproof connection here. Place in here, same thing on the receiver end, place in there like so. And then I'll turn back to the camera and take a few shots. I'm gonna go ahead and check on my 230 here that I am getting the green quench signal, letting me know that it is communicating properly in TTL. I can also confirm this by changing the settings in manual mode on the camera, um, which I shoot in manual mode, so it's easy to just go ahead and change this to, uh, let me just go ahead and open it up all the way on this particular lens. It's gonna let me drop to, oh wow, 1.8. So. You'll notice that the intensity of the strobe does drop, and that's because I've opened the aperture wide open. Um, but if I were to take that same shot, let's say under the desk, I'll notice that I get a very powerful emission from the strobe. Again, going back to the top side here, that coupled with the green light that I'm getting really lets me know that I'm getting accurate exposure and we are communicating properly. Now, as stated before, if you wanted to shoot manual mode, it's pretty simple. Uh, each Canon camera is a little bit different, but roughly speaking, they're all the same. If you go into the shooting menu, page three, go to flash control, and then scroll down until you find external flash function setting. And here's where you can toggle up and go between ETTL and manual. So in this case, we'll just switch over to manual and that way I can now control my strobes via the manual switch on the strobe or strobes themselves, and I can drop them down to the desired power intensity that I want to choose. Now this 1% of the time, I don't wanna be fumbling with the manual setting on the strobe. It, it's a lot of back and forth, it's a lot of tweaking, and I don't get the precision that I would get to let the circuit do the job, which we have spent a lot of time to make sure it's very precise and very fast. Uh, we'll put a link to this product in the description below. Check it out on the website. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course you can comment in that comment section down below on this video, or feel free to shoot us an email to iCloud at iCloud.com, or feel free to give us a call.